did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Okay. Do you know who caused Sasha's death? No. Did you cause Sasha's death? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No. Sasha Samsudian, 27 years old, was a social media manager for an Orlando realtor company. Hey guys, I'm Sasha from 407apartments.com and I'm also this year's AAGO Education Chair. I'd like to invite all of you guys out to Lisa Palooza. She moved into a high-end downtown apartment in Orlando and she was excited about independently living her life. On October 17, 2015, Sasha went to the Attic nightclub with a group of her friends. Anthony, one of her friends, said her that Sasha was ready to leave around 12.30 a.m. He said that it was common for them to go to different bars and then meet up again. He said he didn't see her again, but the next morning they were supposed to go out to breakfast together. The next morning, Sasha didn't come to breakfast and didn't answer her phone or text messages. Anthony and two of her other friends went to check on her because Sasha was always on social media and texting, so it was strange that she didn't answer. Hi, I'm Sasha from 407apartments.com and I'm this year's Education Committee Chair. Thank you so much for attending today's class. Videos like this keep her online and never away from her phone but anyways when they got to Sasha's apartment building, the Uptown Apartments, they saw her car and the gift she was supposed to bring to the baby shower she was supposed to go to that day. They went to her apartment, knocked on the door, and called her name. Anthony called the police because there was no answer. He told 911 that Sasha was missing and that they had called all the hospitals, jails, and other places but couldn't find her. Soon after, the police came and went into her apartment. At first, they couldn't find her until an officer went into her bedroom and saw hair and an arm sticking out of the comforter. Sasha was found, and marks on her neck showed that she had been strangled. They also thought it was strange that it smelled like cleaning products and that her toilet seat was up. Even though Sasha lived alone, there were prints on the toilet seat lid. Her purse, cell phone, and key ring were also gone. On every floor of the apartment building, the police found security cameras. There were cameras in the hallways and by the exits. They also took the footage from the security cameras on the street. On Orange Avenue, which is the main street in downtown Orlando, Sasha would have had to walk 10 blocks to get home. You can see her on the camera clearly staggering and walking intoxicated. She was wearing a white pair of jeans and a purple top which made it easy to the police to spot her in the video even with lots of people in it. Also in this clip she was seen walking back home and it was later brought to light that she had no phone and no ID on her according to the two ladies who tried to stop her after seeing her confused. She was a graduate of Seminole High School in Sanford. Police are asking anyone who was in the area of North Orange Avenue and Mark Street early Saturday morning to please call them. The last time friends saw Sasha was Friday night. She returned home here to her Uptown Place apartments just before 2 a.m. where uh, she was in the hallway caught by a security camera. This is very sad and you know we and our biggest thing is we really do want to solve this and I, I hope that anyone that sees this picture and that can recognize her that night to, you know just to please give us a call. They also talked to the security guard who was on duty at Sasha's apartment complex the night she died. Stephen Duxbury was his name. He said that he saw Sasha that night because she was trying to get into the building. He said she didn't have her cell phone or key fob and couldn't remember her code to get in. He said she was very drunk but she asked him to walk her to her car to check on her things. We went out and we didn't even go to any car because maybe five steps out. She's like, wait, I think I remember the code now. But then, bring her back to the thing, she starts trying to punch in codes again, it's still not working. At this point, I'm like, oh, I gotta keep doing my job. So I'm gonna go to another suite, and if I come back and you're still not in your apartment, we're gonna have to figure out how to deal with the situation. Then he came back and she was nowhere to be found, but after an hour she resurfaced and he saw her with a man who he had never seen before. I think I saw her again at some point later on. It didn't really document it because I wasn't sure and there was nothing suspicious about what she and the gentleman I saw her with were doing. They were just walking in the hallway. Police now have to look for this mysterious man Stephen mentioned. The police looked at the surveillance tapes. <laughs> The video footage showed Sasha walking in after which an unknown man followed her too. 
Minutes later Stephen came through the door. It also showed Stephen following Sasha around the building, he could be clearly seen on the stairs but unfortunately it doesn't show the hallway that leads into Sasha's apartment. Stephen Duxbury is there to keep an eye on her. As he told the police, they are seen going to and from the garage on foot. As of now, his story seems to be true. The police knew right away that Sasha's death was caused by strangulation. On Sasha's body and on the toilet seat, they also found DNA from a different man. Because strangulation is often a crime of passion, the police talked to Sasha's two ex-boyfriends. The first man's name is Taylor, and he works in a bar. Do you know who this is? Yep. Okay, and who is this? How do you know? We dated for a little over two years. Okay. And you... Boyfriend, girlfriend? Yes. Do you guys live together? No. I also must ask you... Did you have any involvement in murder? No, sir. Do you know who murdered? No, sir. Do you have any problem giving us a buckle swab of DNA? I have no problem. Okay. He said that he and Sasha were never together all the time, but they still talked. He said he worked that Friday night until 9.30. He also let them take a sample of his DNA, but that didn't help. Ben was the next person they talked to. He was a suspect because Sasha sent him her last text message at 5.12 a.m. Ben was on it. It's Thursday. Yeah. So Friday, you never spoke to him on the phone. Mm -hmm. So it's just text. Mm -hmm. okay. Where do you work at? Uh, I work at Apple at the Ultimate Mall. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Are you genius? Man, you guys, <laughs> stay busy. Yeah, we do, man. It's been real busy lately, too. You got the new iPhone. He said that he dated Sasha for a short time and that they were supposed to hang out that weekend, but didn't. He said that he stayed all night at a friend's house on Friday and never left. His DNA did not match either. So he was also ruled out. You know what? But you still prostate cancer running? runs in my family, so just gonna relax your lips there a little bit. You don't need to photograph it there. No, I don't think it's so. nah. Let me know if it hurts. It shouldn't. No worries at all. Just gotta make sure I get clean on there. Okay. Yeah. Double simple. Works for me. Like I said, anything I can do to help. Stephen Duxbury was the last suspect. He said he left work at six but cameras showed him still there at 6.36. He was seen carrying two trash bags with him. The handles were red and the bags were white, the same trash bags that were found in Sasha's apartment. The police found out that Stephen's job wasn't to take people's trash out, but to call them if they didn't bring their trash back inside. Stephen was asked to take a polygraph test. When he was asked if he was in Sasha's apartment and if Sasha had been strangled, the needle moved. So, here are the questions I'm going to ask you about that night. Okay. Okay? Yep. Did you enter Sasha's apartment that night? No. Okay. Do you know who caused Sasha's death? No. Did you cause Sasha's death? No. Did you remove any items from Sasha's apartment? No. Hey, Dr. David, how you doing? Pretty good. Thanks. I was just showing you, this is the computer scoring the charts. Yeah, zero, zero, 0.003% chance that the results were produced by a truthful person. So that's basically a 99.7% chance that he's being deceitful. And lying is never going to make it better. I can see it in your eyes. We're done here for now. But I'm going to go home, I'm going to take it up, and I'm going to go to work. 
if you guys want to talk to me again some other time, we'll have a lawyer involved because at this point, I don't feel comfortable talking with you detectives. Police later found out that the garbage bag Stephen has been carrying earlier was the same as the one Sasha has in her apartment, also the shoe print that was left in Sasha's bathroom was linked to one of Stephen's shoes. Stephen had googled how to override a certain type of lock around 5 a.m. which was the same type of lock Sasha had. Forensic positively ID the fingerprint left on Sasha's toilet cover as Stephen's. The last piece of evidence was the DNA left on Sasha's chest. It was later identified as Stephen's DNA. October 17th, Sasha Samsudin was uh, found murdered in her apartment. Today, our detectives have arrested Stephen Duxbury, uh, the security guard from Uptown Apartments in connection with this case. Stephen Duxbury is charged with first degree murder, sexual battery, and burglary to an occupied dwelling. So breaking news alert from the courthouse, a former security guard is indicted for raping and murdering someone he was supposed to be protecting. A grand jury handed down that indictment within the last 90 minutes. This is News 6 at 6. I'm Matt Austin. Stephen Duxbury got two life sentences for murder and rape in the first degree, plus 15 more years for burglary. He later tried to appeal his whole case, but the appeal was denied. More than two years after their daughter was killed, Tara and Ken Samsudin still deal with the grief. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Now the couple is honoring their daughter's legacy by working alongside the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Someone to hold your hands, someone to guide you through the system. For Tara Samsudin, she struggled to work as a trauma nurse after the death of her daughter. Instead, she's helping people like those at this annual victim's rights breakfast. We help ourselves by telling our stories, but we also help them by listening to their stories. A beautiful soul was lost. What a great impact Sasha would have had in this world. May her soul continue to rest in peace.